All right, just a little bit of React for today. Here's the application that we were working on before. Um, it's uploaded to GitHub, and I think I've given most everybody access. If you don't have access, send me your GitHub username, and I'll add you to the project. But um, I believe it's set as open source anyway. Okay, so last time we looked at a simple React component um, for our project. And I believe that this actually does build. Let's check it out. So if we go into the directory, we should be able to run Webpack and have it build our file. And it'll end up in this public directory right here. Uh, and I think if I just run, no. Sorry, got so many projects that I forget how to run each of them. Let's see, maybe it's... Okay, so this has node set up. Let's see if it loads anything. And it does, okay. Um, so right now, this is what you'll get. And you'll notice that the I am react here does display. So if we come in um, and look at this very simple react component, here we are just creating a react class. We have the render method in here and that's it right now. And all that it does is it just returns this text and I can type in something else. Okay. I thought that we might have the hot reloader working in here, but I don't think we implemented that. So maybe we can talk about the hot reloader tomorrow. But if I go out to my project here and I run Webpack again, that's gonna rebuild it. And then I restart the server and we can see the hello world. So that, that step right there, that couple of steps is actually really tedious when you're working on a project which is why the React Hot Reloader makes this really nice because when the Hot Reloader is working, I can just change this code here and it will automatically reflect in this page. So I'll try and get that running. Um, yeah, it's not running right now. Uh, this project also has a number of resources that I've pasted in. So if you just go out to GitHub, let's see. There it is. All right, so here's the Firestarter, Firestarter project right here. <clears throat> I'll paste that link into the learning room in Slack. So now everybody will have access to it. And here you go, if you scroll down into the, through the README, uh, you can look at all these different boilerplate projects Here's a couple of things for React. And for Brandon, here's some material design links that you can go take a look at and, and play around with. Actually, so the top ones are material design links. This admin LTE and the SB admin 2 are um, open source templates. So whenever you start a new project, if you want to not have to deal with all of the design for, say, an admin backend, these make great, um, great starting places. All right. So let's go in and take a look at our component just a little bit more and think about some of the other things that we might need to do. So in index.js, uh, we're just rendering the app.jsx file right here. It just says find the place on the page that has the element on the page with the ID of React placeholder and render app into it. And again, here you see HTML-like syntax mixed into my JavaScript. And at first, that will bother you because we've been told for the past decade that you should not mix your HTML code in with your JavaScript. But in fact, this turns out to be a very elegant solution. Um, and it helps to keep your logic and your presentation next to each other so that you're not always hunting around to find the, the, the logic that powers the presentation. Okay. Um, and this is going to get turned into JavaScript code, and we've seen that in the Webpack, uh, in the bundle file that Webpack generates for us. Okay, so here's app.jsx. Let's go ahead and um, 
For the sake of time, I'm going to look at one of our other projects that has more components in it, and we'll talk about the components just by looking at them um, instead of writing new components today. So all of these files are just named JS. You can choose. Uh, the reason to name them JSX might be because your uh, development environment, in this case Sublime, will pick up the JSX highlighting syntax and it doesn't matter. You can use Gulp and Webpack to pipe them through and, and handle all the processing. All right, so here we have the file that kicks it off, and in this case, it's this install.js. This is one of the projects we worked on, and it required um, a very simple installer that generates some HTML and JavaScript code that somebody else will copy and paste and put into their website. React happened to be a very good, very simple, very fast solution for this. So you can see that we're just rendering the installer. The installer comes from components install installer, so let's go look at that. So we have components um, install and installer. Now this is a much more significant piece of code than our example code from the other, um, from our sample project. So this is what we're working towards. You'll notice that this includes jQuery because we need to do some jQuery things. It includes underscore because underscore or lodash if you want to use um, a more robust version of underscore lodash is a very good alternative. Um, it lets us do functional kinds of things and composition kinds of things, which is very, very useful. Uh, and maybe I'll show you some of that down below. All right, so these requires right here, um, well, these requires right here are just re um, including other React components. So for example, let's go see how this website button gets used. Um, you'll notice that this is our render function for the installer component. And it, what it does is it generates a map. So here's some of that underscore functionality goodness here. Um, it runs over this object that contains a bunch of different website data. And then it generates a vector of website buttons. So then I can take those website buttons and even though this is HTML looking right here. I can take those same website buttons and stick them in here using this type of output. Um, if you've ever dealt with any sort of JavaScript templating language, the brackets are, are just another common. Um, I think Handlebars does it with two. EJS does it like this, so it looks like Rails. Uh, React is really simple. They choose to do it like this. So this says, take my code from up above that I generated using um, and put into the websites button and stick it right here. Uh, the same thing happens here with the sizes and with the code. Those are both generated up above and then inserted into this other list of HTML looking stuff and returned as part of the render process. Uh, you'll notice that I've added these JS hint ignore start and end. The reason for that is so that JS lint doesn't barf all over this because once JS lint or um, JS lint or JS hint hit this in your code, they're going to barf all over it and tell you you shouldn't be doing this. So we preempt that and say yes, we should. Uh, a couple of things that are important to note: this will return objects. This does not return an HTML string. That's important because that's how the, the React Virtual DOM works. It generates this tree of objects that it can then run diffs against. What's also really cool about that is that you can begin to use the React abstraction layer to render to different outputs. So one of the cool things that I saw recently was uh, React, oops, um, this one right here. So you can render your, you can render React to the DOM. That's what we're used to. You can render React to the canvas element. So that's what this project is all about. So I can use surface and layer and group. And um, at the end of the day, instead of rendering out to the DOM, this will render into a canvas. Um, that's something James is probably familiar with, did it in the, ironically, <laughs> the canvas, the Instructure Canvas project, uh, when we were uh, doing some of the math stuff there. Uh, this is also beneficial because this is how React Native works. Instead of rendering to the DOM, they generate iOS native components that then can be compiled directly to native code. Netflix does this and uses it as an abstraction layer so that they can render 
directly to the television. So instead of rendering the, to the DOM, they generate code that can go to the TV. And that's kind of, kind of cool. Um, so this methodology, this type of abstraction buys you a lot of power in that sense. Okay, so one other quick thing. So let's go back to our sample project. Move this down just a little bit. This is how you've traditionally created a React class. So you can see react.createClass. And that was a method that they um, that they created on the on the React object. They're moving to ES6. So React 13, you know, 0 0.13.0 0 beta just uses ES6 modules. And so things change a little bit. And they change and they begin to look like this. So I'm just going to take this directly from the example code from the blog. Uh, this will not work with ECMAScript 5, which is what is deployed in all the browsers today. Uh, you can't do classes, you can't call this extends, That all of that would just fail. But we can use this today if we use a transpiler. Uh, so that'll be another thing that we'll look at is bringing a transpiler into the project so that we can use the ES6 functionality now. Um, so basically this says I have my component this time gets to be this hello message. It extends the React component. In the old language, that was react.create class. In this new style, it is extends React component. And then it's the same type of render where I just return the HTML or other stuff, depending on what I'm trying to render. All right, any questions?